What is up everybody and welcome back to the Cinepax YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going over how you can make and mask this awesome sequence inside DaVinci Resolve's Fusion using Cinepax Liquid Spiral Pack. So without further ado, let's get right into it. To get this pack, head on over to Cinepax.com, look for this pack, or browse any of the free packs if you don't feel like purchasing anything right away. You can use all of these for free in any of your projects. Just add it to cart, and then put in some more information, none of that's going to be used, and then you can download all the assets you need. Once you download it and extracted all the packs, all you gotta do is grab your folder and drag it into the Media tab in DaVinci Resolve. If you drag it here, it's gonna maintain the folder structure, but if you drag it into the main media pool, it's gonna just combine them all into one folder. As you can see, this pack has a ton of awesome liquid warping effects. They're all Apple ProRes with transparency and 4K resolution, so they're super cool to work with. Now, the really neat thing about this pack, though, is that there's a front and back to each of these spiral effects. So if you drag in the warp A, as you can see here, then we can drag in the B underneath it, and you'll see it creates a full loop. So what we can do is put something in between them and it will make an awesome spiral that wraps around it if we, for example, rotoscope somebody out, which is what we're going to be doing today. But in many cases, you don't even have to mess with rotoscoping. For example, this looks fine right here, but let me show you how to actually like adjust the colors and make this look better. So let's manually track this for a second. Um, as you can see, the footage kind of zooms in on him. So let's go to our inspector. Let's keyframe our transform and then let's open up our window here and we'll just try to match it right here to where his pectoral is. So we'll go down to the little frame, line it up manually, just a few more, few more frames. As you can see, it's keyframe, so it's auto animating. Then go to the end of the clip and right up here to where we want to keep it. So now if we press play, it kind of moves with him as the camera zooms in. Perfect. Okay, the last thing we're going to do, let's go over to our color tab. And inside of our color tab, let's open up this curves uh, window right here and let's try to make this match like the green color scheme So to do that if we want to make this green we want to take out some red Right there and let's go to our blue and kind of bring down the blue a little bit um, That way our saturation matches look at that perfect. Uh, we can also mess with our hue right here with the hue slider um, Or mess with our saturation if we want to bring that up ever so slightly and there we go. That looks pretty good Awesome, so now if we press play now the main part of this tutorial though, we're gonna be jumping into fusion. So get your seatbelts on, cause this is gonna get crazy. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is track a spiral around him. So we're gonna track him because he's moving in the frame. So press shift spacebar on your keyboard and type in tracker right there, perfect. Okay, so then we're gonna drag this tracker onto his face of all things, because that's where we're gonna go ahead and track. And then let's bring, try to shrink our tracker down. And then also uh, see which channel here does his face have the most contrast. And it looks like the blue channel has the most contrast. So that's what we're gonna track from. Second thing we're gonna do is change the adaptive mode to every frame. That's basically gonna make it so it tries to update um, what it's trying to track every frame rather than maybe if we had like a uh, a tracker that's just like a on a green screen or something it's likely unlikely that that image is going to be changing but since his face is going to be changing a lot we're going to have it adapt every frame after that we're going to go ahead and press track from current time let that track forward perfect and let's go back here and let's track backwards from current time awesome it drifts a little bit in the beginning but that is a-okay Okay, so once we have our tracker, we're gonna now drag in our gold spirals. I love these. So I'm gonna drag layer A and layer B in. Perfect, just like that. So the A, I believe, goes on top. So we're just gonna drag this on top. Now the first thing you have to do though to make this tracker work is you have to go over to the operation tab of it and switch it from none to match move. That's gonna turn it into a merge node essentially. And as you can see, now our spiral is on top, but this is the back layer. So uh, I have them mixed, mixed up. So let me actually plug in the other one. There we go, just like that. And let's press shift spacebar, transform. That way we can actually move and adjust this. And so I'm gonna shrink this down and kind of line it up with our main actor right here. And if I press play, it's spiraling along and it looks good, cool. But it's missing the back side of it, as you can see. It spirals around and disappears. So that's where our second layer comes into effect. Um, you'll also notice that as it's moving, because it's attached to the tracker node, it's moving with him throughout the scene. So let's take our second media in 
and let's copy our transform node and paste it and plug it into that. That way they both are in the same position because they're supposed to line up with each other and then now merge these together just like that. So now they're being merged together and if we press play again you're going to see our spirals working perfectly. Um, oh, I also mixed it up once again. Notice our green is our foreground and the yellow here is our background. So if we press Control T on the merge node, it's going to swap those inputs. And so now it looks correct. But as you can see, the background node is overlapping. So for the sake of clarity, let's rename these. So we're going to type this in as layer A because this is the A clip. And then we're going to change this. You do this by pressing F2, by the way. Layer B. Perfect, so now you know which one is which if you're following along. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to add a mask to this layer and I'm gonna draw just a little square around him. And the nice part is we can kind of cheat this because he doesn't overlap with it along his whole body. But as you can see, we need to invert it. So click that invert button, perfect. Okay, so let's add just a minor soft edge. That way it kind of bleeds, super small though. There you go, perfect, okay. And then we're gonna manually animate this. So it automatically adds a keyframe here. So if we just go back a few frames and we select all of these and we move it manually, you're gonna see that it automatically animates these. So go a few frames forward, perfect, it's looking good. And then let's go a few more frames like right here and it needs a little adjustment here. Drag that here and try to get this to line up the best we can. Perfect. A few more frames. Doesn't even look like anything's going on here. So if I let it render out and we play it through, now you can see it overlaps with him perfectly. So that's it, we're completely done with the character. But let's go ahead and add spirals to each of these lampposts here, which is basically the same thing, super easy. Um, to make things simple, go ahead and we can click Control G, just, just so you don't get confused or anything, and just turn that into a little group. That way we don't have to look at it. Now, all we're gonna do is the exact same thing as before. Shift spacebar and add a tracker. This is gonna go a lot simpler than before. Move this tracker to our little light post right here. This is gonna track so much better because there's so much contrast here. All we have to do is go ahead and press track forward and then go back to this plane and track backwards from the current frame. And that tracked perfectly. We didn't even have to change the adaptive mode. Go ahead, let's add spiral four right here. And we don't even have to mask because we can kind of cheat it since it's around the post. So let's plug that in. Um, it's not showing up, that's because we have to change our tracker node to operation match move like before. And then let's go ahead and press shift spacebar to add a transform mode node, transform, and now we can kind of move this around. Now if we want to change when our media starts playing, like slide it like a timeline, open up the keyframes panel. And you can see our media in two is the one that we have plugged in, so let's find media in two. And as you can see, we can I can slide this. Uh, track around and we can change when the animation starts. So I'm going to have it start already and then let's go ahead and shrink it down and just line it up with the post the best we can. And if we press play, you're going to see it follows just perfectly with the scene and we didn't even have to mask or do anything. Awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and do one final thing and just maybe add um, a blur and I want to change the color. So I'm going to type in brightness and, and contrast. Okay, so brightness and contrast, I can go ahead and kind of bring down the gain a little bit and then I'm going to bring down the saturation though. So that's going to make it... Uh, little that's gonna be basically make it silver and the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a blur node to this simple blur node and a little too much there let's try to bring that down just just like that that way it matches with the scene a little bit more and that's it all right so now to finish up the scene all I'm gonna do is go to each of these concrete posts and I'm going to add a tracker node to each one and I'm going to then add another spiral effect to each one so I'll be right back after that Alrighty, and 
after a lot of tracking, <laughs> we have added liquid chrome to each of these posts. Um, there's two in the foreground here that you'll see. All I did was actually hand animate, hand animate those with the transform nodes. Um, I didn't actually use tracker nodes for these here. Um, which you'll see as it comes up in the foreground. Here it is. Yeah, I just tracked those by hand. So outside of that, feel free to take a glance. I know it looks complicated, but it's the exact same thing, just repeated if you look at it. Um, nice and simple. It's a tracker node and then your simple layer for each one, and it's just stacked on top of each other. But we're ready to take it back into our edit sequence, and that is our sequence. That's our effects. We did it. So uh, good job. I hope you guys followed along nicely, and I hope you guys found this pack really useful and fun to work with. If you need more packs, head on over to cinepacks.com and use the code SAMPLE15 to get 15% off any of your orders. Other than that, have a great time editing, like, share, and comment on this video, and have a good one. Bye guys.